Hebrews chapter 1, and we read verses uh, 14. It says, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who are, who shall be as of salvation? Now, it does not say, pay attention, are they not, it does not say this, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister to them? It says, for them. Uh, it does not say send forth to minister to them. It says to minister for them. Uh, okay, let me put it this way. Now it's okay. Pay attention now. It's okay. It's okay. Some of you are very slow. If I come to you and I say to you, I'm here to minister to you. It's one thing. When I say I'm here to minister for you, it's another thing. Ah. You see, when you minister to me, you come with whatever you come with. And you minister to me. But when you minister for me, I tell you what I want. Ah, I think I'm on my own right here. I'm on my own right here. So when I come to minister to you, I come with whatever I have. And I'm, it's more like somebody gave it to me and I'm giving it to you the way it is. But if I'm ministering for you, I literally come with nothing and I stand in front of you like this. And then you tell me uh, what you want and I will go get it. And I will come and minister for you. Ay, ay, ay. What it simple means, on my behalf, you go. So you are ministering for me. So I want you to understand that the Bible says something about angels. Because there is no spiritual reality without you understanding what controls the spiritual realm while you are here. Because you are in the third dimension, there is no way that you can just, you know, move and just be able to access everything at once. So in spiritual realities, you then understand that they are ministers who are called ministering spirits. You see, God is so big that the day you understand that you're gone, he's so big that God is not doing anything right now. The Bible says, and God rested. Which scripture have you heard or read that says God came out of rest? The day he rested, he has been resting up to today. <laughs> up to today. God is resting. He's seated on his throne. God is so powerful that he can't move his finger. What he did was he created a system. I don't think the owner of McDonald's, the brothers, have been in South Africa in Chabalala to see how McDonald's is doing. But they know the beggar we cook there is the one they cook there. What causes them to cook and produce the same beggar? System. So what they worked on was the system. So the system will work itself. And it will duplicate itself. It will replenish. Ah, it will subdue. It's a system. So God is so big that he will eat. That's why he says now multiply. So he worked on a woman. He worked on a man. And he said, be fruitful, not be seedful, because already he had put a seed in them. He didn't say be seedful. He said, be fruitful. And there is no fruit without seed. So he already put a seed there. That's a system. God created one Eve, one Adam. From there, look at us. System. So he never went back, starting to grab lumber soil, dust, breathing. No, he went on a system. And that system gave God what he wanted. Yes, so he's so big that he sat down like this. And he worked a system. He said, ah, there will be Mzwake there. Yes. Apostle Miz. I know he loves nice things. Yes. And every time he'll be asking me for nice things. And I'm too big to be going where he wants me to go. But let me create for him. Ministering spirits to minister for him 
as soon as he inherits salvation. Ah. So angels don't wait on God to come to you. The moment you say yes to Jesus, they come. Because you have inherited salvation. So God is so big that he's relaxed. He doesn't stand up. He doesn't do nothing. The only time God stood up, eh, yes, Apostle, is in the book of Acts chapter 7, where they were stoning Stephen, remember? And Stephen looked up. He saw the heavens open. And he saw God stood up like this. But what did God do? Nothing. Stephen still died. You didn't catch the revelation. What did God do? Stephanie died. So if Stephanie at that moment could have called on an angel, something could have happened maybe. Ah, you are not hearing what I'm saying. Ah, maybe you are not hearing me. The Bible says, and they prayed for Peter in prison. And the Lord released an angel. <laughs> it was not God who went to prison. When the king of Judah was threatened, Hezekiah, by the king of Assyria, Isaiah was sent by God to the king Hezekiel. He said, Hezekiel, don't worry. None of their arrows shall touch you and your men. The Bible says in the morning, in the early hours of the morning, the Lord sent an angel. And when he landed, 167,000 soldiers died immediately. When the children of Israel were losing a battle in the days of Joshua, the Bible says, and the Lord released one angel, and the angel came with his sword at his back. And when Joshua saw him, he drew his sword. He wanted to strike the angel of the Lord. And the angel of the Lord looked at him, and he said, are you with us or against us? And the angel of the Lord said, neither of you. I am in the side of the Lord. Hey, You are fighting a physical battle and you are getting a supernatural help. That's what spiritual realities are all about. Uh, yeah, you go. Lift up your right hand and say, that is so. One more time, lift up your right hand and say, that is so. Fighting a physical battle. But help is from above. So the Bible says angels are ministering spirits. Send forth to minister for them. Now, that, that word for them there is so powerful that if you fail to understand it, you can have angels and the angels will never minister to you. They don't do as they will. They will know you are broke. They will know you are sick. They will know you are tired. You know, there are people who don't understand how angels operate. Seriously. You'll hear people say, ah, there is no angel of money. There is no, it's not biblical. There is no angel of anything. The Holy Ghost. Listen, in the days of Jesus, the Bible says in, in the book of Matthew chapter 4, verse 11, and he hungered. Why was he hungry? It's because he was from 40 days and 40 nights of fasting. The Bible says he hungered and the angels appeared and ministered. Put it on the screen. Let them see it. Ah. <laughs> Jesus was on top of the mountain in the wilderness. He looked down like this. He said, I want to arrive there. Angels, I'm hungry. Ah, put it there. The book of Matthew chapter 4 verse 11. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Angels, Angels came, came and did what? Ministered unto him. And ministered unto him. But why did angels minister to him? Because Jesus was hungry. Praise the Lord, everybody. He hung out and angels appeared and ministered unto him. In the book of Luke chapter 23, the Bible says, and Jesus was praying, take away the cup. He began to sweat blood. And the Bible says in verse 43, and the Lord released one angel from heaven. You see, the Bible even specific, put it there. The Bible is specific. That angel was not any other angel that was around him. It was from heaven. Luke 22. Saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Verse 43, what we are looking for. And they appeared an angel unto him from where? 
and what did the angel do? Strengthening, Strengthening him. Jesus, when he got baptized, he received the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says the Holy Ghost is our strengthener. He had the Holy Ghost on top of having the Holy Ghost. And the angel appeared to strengthen him. Imagine right now, you are so weak or something happened. And you are sitting like this. And you know you have the Holy Ghost. And Gabriel appears. Automatically, your power will come back. Uh, you are not hearing me. You are not hearing me. Not that the situation changed. So the angel was from heaven. Luke had to be precise. Not they appeared an angel. You see, in Matthew four eleven, it does not say from heaven. They just appeared to minister to him. Meaning they were all around. But this one was from heaven. Came and strengthened Jesus. Ministering spirits. Sit down. So brothers and sisters, we are in the flesh. But there is a reality of the spirit. Are we together? That the Bible or God expects us to be exposed to and operate in. This one, you don't operate in it by knowing it. Of course, you need to pass by that. But for you to see it, there are certain things that you must do. The Bible says, uh, angels hearken to the voice of his word. Another vision says, to his word. Praise the Lord, everybody. Meaning angels, uh, how can I put this? In Daniel chapter 10, and I want us to read from verses 12. And I want us to read it slow, like we were there when it was written. If you're ready, say, I'm ready, Major. I'm ready, Major. Now, in the count of three, one, two, three. Then said he unto me, uh -huh. Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day uh -huh. that thou didst set thine heart to understand uh -huh. and to chasten thyself before thy God, uh -huh. thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. And I am come. Because God said so. Come on, look at what it says. For I am come because God said so. But it says, for I am come for thy words. Meaning if Daniel, you were quiet, there was no way that I would have been here. Ah. You see, this is what happens in the spirit. Brother, just come here so that the people at home can see you nicely. So he's an angel. Are we together in your life? Are we here? Are we here? Are we here? He's what? He is an angel. And I'm here as a believer in Christ. And the Bible says he is a ministering spirit. Sent to minister for me, not to me. Where we have read, the angel tells Daniel, I am come because of your words. So if Daniel did not utter anything, I will not have been here. So what now the Bible is telling you there is that words are road constructors for angels. That's powerful. That's powerful. Words are road constructors for angels. Meaning if there is no word, an angel cannot move. Because there is no way for the angel to move. So your words uh, will create a highway for angels to move. So if I'm here and he is there and I'm here as a believer. Now pay attention now. I'm here as a believer and he's right there. Guess what happens? The moment I say money is coming. The moment I stop. Guess what? The angel that was coming with money stops. That's why the Bible says, do not vow a vow. Another vision says, do not say a thing and do and don't do what you said. So the moment you change, I, I want to say something now. When I say this, take one step. When you, say, you take one step forward. When I say what I will say after, you take one step backwards, right? So first you take one step forward and then backwards. Money is coming. Ooh, things are not working together for me. They didn't get it. Uh, they didn't get it. I'm healed. I've been sick. God can hear my prayers. What's happening? Just keep taking steps back. 
Then you hear the word from Apostle Mies and you go, I am healed in the name of Jesus. 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 I am healed in the name of... Just touch me on the shoulder. I'm automatically your healing has taken place. Please be seated, our angel. Uh, Daniel is telling you there, I am come for thy words. You remove your words, I'm nowhere to be found. Please be seated. With spiritual realities, you then understand how powerful what you say is. As a matter of fact, when you look at it, you then realize that whenever I speak, can I work it out a little bit? The word speaking, in fact, let me start with mouth. The word mouth is the word stoma. Stoma simple means two things. It means to repair. It means to give life. Stoma. At the same time, stoma means knife. So the same way that means to give life to repair, it also means knife. So with my mouth, I can produce knife. Yes, and what does knife do? Kill. Destroys. So with my same mouth, I can cut something down. Yes, Yet at the same time, it says stoma means to repair and to give life. Yes, That's why the Bible says, behold, I have put life and death in front of you. Choose. That's why the Bible says it, put it this way. It says the power of life and death is in your tongue, in your mouth. Because stoma will produce what you say. That's why there are people who are not seeing God in their lives. It's because in church you'll hear a powerful word from apostle. And you'll begin to say yes, yes, yes. But when you get in your car, you start saying something. Contrary to what you were saying in the church. And you wonder why you take one step here and you take five steps here. Say, I refuse. Say, I refuse. Say, I refuse. In 2023, I refuse to be ordinary. Then the word speaking, it's not like stoma. Stoma means mouth, which is to cut, which is knife, which is uh, also repair, which is to give life. But now the word speaking is the word gimel. Gimel. So when somebody is speaking, it's actually somebody gimeling. So when you are speaking, you are gimeling. The word speaking or the word speak, it simply means gimel. Gimel is from the word camel. And camel means transport. So now when I speak, I'm transporting something. <laughs> Don't you know that Christianity is all around mouth? In the beginning, God said, let there be. And how did men fall? By eating. They didn't eat with their fingers. They ate with their mouth. It all went back to the mouth. And when restoration of men happened, it went back to the mouth. Jesus said, eat my flesh, drink my blood. It's all in the mouth. The mouth can bring life and the mouth can bring death. Please be seated. So with spiritual realities, you are careful. You watch your words. Because you know how powerful your words are. You are going for an interview and they told you like, uh, you know, 5 o'clock. They're saying in the morning 7 a.m. you need to be there. You have no time to prepare. Or you don't even know what questions they are going to ask you. Aya. Aya. I said, Aya. Don't sit there and say, Lord, I don't know what to do. Walk around and say, I know what to do. I know what to do. I know what to do. And when you are tired of saying, I know what to do, go, Libra Sovahina Husky. Somewhere, somehow, an answer will drop in your spirit. Ah, if you are hearing me, I want you to shout, Glory, somebody. spiritual realities we are men and women of power I said we are men and women of power that's who we are 
There is a dimension where you see God's glory. That's why John says, we were eyewitnesses of these things. Our eyes have seen the glory. You see, there is a dimension that when you enter into pretty, you are no longer the pretty that you yourself you know. You are a different pretty from yourself. Can I say one more thing and we close? I said, can I say one more thing and we close? Ah, you people. There is a dimension of spiritual realities. You, you remember the woman with the, with the issue of blood. The Bible says, and she touched Jesus. And as she touched Jesus, guess what happened? The Bible says, and Jesus said, who touched me? And the disciples said, wait a minute, master. How can you say, who touched you? While is everyone is pressing towards you. Everyone is touching you. What kind of qu question is this? To say, who touched you? Sorry. And Jesus looked at them and said, not the touching of touching, but the touching of touching. Are you still here or you went on a holiday? Not the touching of touching, but the touching of touching. Jesus felt power leaving him. That's too big. You know what that means? I wish we could go to that scripture. It's okay. You see, he felt power leaving him. He did not choose for power to leave him. It left him unconscious. He was unconscious. Unconsciously, it left him. So literally power, without Jesus says power, saying power go out, power left Jesus. What is the woman who was sick? Touched, expecting power. Power left Jesus without Jesus saying power leave. And it came to that woman. Imagine operating or entering a dimension where something will leave something unconscious. Where money locates you unconscious. Uh, you are not hearing what I'm saying. There are days and there are dimensions. Listen, there are days and there are dimensions in the spirit. Where when you are sitting like this, on your phone, you just hear, king, 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 you look, it's money. King, 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 you look, it's money. King, 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 you look, it's money. I prophesy to somebody under the influence of my voice. This year is your year of flourishing. You shall flourish in the Holy Ghost. You shall flourish in your walk with God. You shall flourish financially. You shall flourish in every area of your life. I prophesy to somebody under the influence of my voice. God is lifting you higher. And he's taking you to greater heights in the name of Jesus. Your eyes are being opened right now. You shall move in spiritual realities. Angels ahead of you. Angels behind you. Angels on your left. Angels on your right. Angels on top of you. Angels under you. Angels all over you. Somebody shout yes! We are closing now. Say, I hear you, Major. Hmm. Believe it or not, we did not uh, minister the message that I was here for. <laughs> I believe by the Spirit of God, we are going to minister it another time. Kalidi yan sotoko brahas yateha. Linzi ya kufra takina mahan satakablaya. Some of you right now, the Lord is saying, work on your vocab, your vocabulary. Work on your vocab. Do you know that some of you demons don't know it's you speaking? It's, it's you moving until you speak. They don't know it's you. The Bible says, as he is in 1 John 4, 17. As he is, so are we here on earth. It is no longer I, but Christ in me. Christ in me, the hope of glory. In him I walk, in him I live. In him I have my being, my identity. Meaning in the spirit, I look exactly like Jesus. That's why you are born again, born from above. So when the devil looks at you, he sees Jesus. But the only time he knows it's you is when you speak. Jesus said the words that I speak. They are spirit and they are life. 
Praise the Lord, everybody. That's what the Bible says. Put, the, the Bible puts it this way. It says, for that at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee, and a lot of people think name, name, name. The word, the word name means anoma, as we all know. The word anoma means character. So the Bible says, at the character of Jesus. Praise the Lord, everybody. Every knee bows. The sons of Sceva used the name of Jesus and said, come out in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches. They didn't call Jesus from Brazil, Gabriel Jesus, no. Or the one in Mexico, the one who plays football, no. They said, Jesus, the one Paul preaches. And the demons said, Paul, we know, Jesus, we know, but who are you? Because they looked for the character of Jesus and they could not see it. And the demons beat them up. So every time you're about to pray and every time you're about to decree a thing, about to declare a thing, in the spirit, that's when they know it's you. The moment you say, that's what the Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. God knows you are weak, but he doesn't want you to confess weak. And a writer of a song said, let the poor say I'm rich. Meaning, let the cursed say I'm blessed. Some of you right now, you are looking at me. Nothing has been moving in your life for a long time. Why don't you listen to the apostle of God? Why don't you listen to your prophet, a man that God has brought in your life for your own growth? Listen and hear me very well. Are you still here? Are you still here? Some of you in your families, when people look at you, they see you and they call you a curse breaker. But the reality is, you yourself are full of curses. They call you a curse breaker. You call yourself a curse breaker. But when you look at your life, there is no curse that you have broken. And that is because curses are not broken by, because, by somebody saying, I'm a curse breaker. It is when you understand the spiritual reality of things. You see, spiritual reality, that's why no man can say he understands or she, a woman, she understands spiritual realities and don't understand the power of submission. Anybody that can stand and say, You're, you can do it on your own, only you and God, that person does not understand spiritual realities. Because in the spirit, the less is blessed by the greater. Even, uh, if, even a man called Abraham was blessed by a man called Melchizedek. A man called Paul was prayed for by a man called Ananias. When he was in the church in Antioch, him and Barnabas, elders of the church, laid their hands and released him. Nobody prays for you. Nobody rebukes you. Nobody corrects you. Do you really think you are on the right path? Even the people of the world, they have adopted the system of the church, the spiritual system, the rules of the spirit. And they use them to engage and to live their lives. You look at the days of Mike Tyson. The man was the baddest man on the planet. The animal. But in his days, he had a coach. You look at Floyd Mayweather, he has a coach. LeBron James has a coach. Leon Messi has a coach. Why is the coach not the best player? Why is the coach not the best fighter? Why would a best fighter in the world need a coach? A coach who's not the best fighter in the world. It's because submission, some of you don't understand, is not weakness, but it's power under control. Submission is the womb of maturity. When you get in, you come out matured. Your, 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 your refusal, the way you are refusing to submit, shows what you carry. Because with Spaza Shop, I don't need an accountant. I can micromanage everything. But with a mall, 
I need an accountant. So if you have a small, small, people with small, you know you have small, small when you feel no need to submit under anybody. With greatness, you must. Why are they paying these people millions? Yet they're the best basketball players, but they have a personal coach. Why? And they're paying the millions. And this one is not even the best in the world. There is something that they know you don't know. You, me, ah, God, if I'm wrong, God will correct me. Me and God, I worship God in my house. Me, I don't go to any church. I don't talk to anybody. Yet the Bible in the book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 7 is telling you how important it is to have people over your life. The Bible says, God has put them to watch over your soul. Paul says in the book of Corinthians, he says, am I not your apostle? He says, are ye not the works of my hands? He corrects Timothy in the, he corrects Timothy in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verses 15. He says, you might have thousand guardians, you might have thousand mentors, but you have one father in the Lord. And he says, I am your father. And people will tell you about other. The Bible says, don't call anybody father except your heavenly father. And they will leave scriptures like that. Here the Bible calls Abraham, Father Abraham. Even when we call Abraham, we call him Father Abraham. A man who was in hell in the, in the book of Luke chapter 16, you read from verse 23. The rich man who went to hell. The Bible says he looked up and he called Father Abraham. He said, Father Abraham. Abraham was in paradise, but he still called Abraham Father Abraham. If scripture said, don't call anybody father, it means your biological father is not your father. So when it said father there, the word father essentially means creator. Ah, ah. Are we together? So that's what it meant there. But people will take that. We are in the days where we have so many spiritual bastards. And there are people who are anointed to pull people out of God's ways in the name of their protecting them from the dangers that they themselves may be experienced. And when the people come out, instead of them thriving in their spirit, they backslide. And the people that pull them out does not even care to check their spiritual life. If I come to you and I tell you that Apostle Mies is a fake prophet or false prophet, if I really care about you, I will tell you who is a true prophet. The moment I tell you somebody is fake and I don't tell you who is true, you yourself, you must use your mind to say, since I was being fed spiritually, since I was growing, and you are telling me this, who is right so that I can go there? The enemy is busy causing exodus in the body of Christ. And those that are causing exodus right now, they are suffering the consequences. It's time you believe what God says in his word. In 2023, don't be an island. Don't be a lone ranger. Have authority over your life. I'm talking about spiritual authority. In the days of Moses, Balaam could not curse the children of Israel. He said there is no enchantment against the Israel. Moses is amongst them and the people are in rank. By a prophet, Israel was delivered. By a prophet, Israel was preserved. I told you God is sitting. He's doing nothing. You know how God fights his battles. Can I tell you? Can I tell you, church? Are you here or you went on a holiday? On Zoom, are you still there? Ah, Zoom is still fired up. Somebody just saying two more hours. Ah, you are, you are mad. Listen. God fights his battles this way. Because you heard me saying God is sitting. He doesn't move. And he says, I am the Lord. I change not. I'm the almighty great in battle. <laughs> the battle is of the Lord. Another one says, it's for the Lord. And I'm telling you, he's sitting. He's not doing anything. Let me tell you how he does it. While he's sitting. He'll be sitting like this. I want the people at home to see me nicely. He'll be sitting like this. Heaven is his throne. Earth is his footstool. So he's sitting like this. And there's a battle there. He anoints David. He says, go and fight it. David fights the battle. And he says, I am powerful. <laughs> I 
wish I had somebody here who would say, Lord, do as you will. People who fully give their lives to, Lord, to, the, to the Lord Jesus and say, Lord, do as you please with my life. Move me the way you want to move me. Mold me the way you want to mold me. I am for you and I'm yours. That's how God fights his battles. You see, the day you understand that, you will never be broke in any day of your life. The Bible says, give, and it shall be what? Given back unto you. Good measure, shaken together, running over, shall angels, shall God, shall Jesus, but it says, shall men. So you give there, then God anoints the man. Ah, you, you people don't understand how God operates. But some of you have tried to manipulate spiritual laws. Open the floodgates of heaven. The floods, they are not opening. What's happening? He said, tithe, and I shall open. You are singing. He said, if you pray, I shall hear. I shall answer. You are complaining. You know, it doesn't make sense. And every time, as a child of God, you complain, you are prolonging things. The Bible says, it was a journey of 40 days. But the Lord caused them to be in the wilderness for 40 years because they were murmuring. Complaining does more damage than you think. The word I'm giving you right now, go home, go with it, hold it together like this. Refuse to say, even when you're about to speak something negative, when you're used to say, Hey, man, I don't have money, you see, you know, you're used to say, The moment you're about to refuse for it to come, stand up on your feet. I want you, by the power of the Holy Spirit, because the Lord spoke to me. And said, 2023, this will be a year of spiritual realities. Only spiritual people will thrive like this, not tomorrow. Listen, this is a year of total takeover. Some of you, you are listening to me right now. You have never thought you buy any land. This year you shall buy it. None of your relatives has ever went to Europe with a... You'll be the first one to go to Europe. None of your relatives are millionaires. That if I was to ask you, who is your relative who is a millionaire? You're like, mm. you see my uncle, ne? the brother to my uncle married somebody and this somebody's brother is connected to a friend and that friend is a millionaire. Look, at, for you to locate a millionaire in your family, you have to go somewhere. Ah. So you see my brother. Say, mm, the brother to my brother. Mm, there is somebody that my brother's friend or sister is married to. Ah. Look at this. It's crazy. Think about it. If some of you right now, you are thinking, you are like, but mm, who's a millionaire in my family? And right now, you are connecting the dots. <laughs> Look at people connecting the dots. They're like, but who? Mm. And right now, some of you are like, mm, but a brother to. You, you are doing exactly what I was saying. You shall be the first one, some of you here. If you are not already one, you shall be the first one in the name of Jesus. Men with substance. Women with substance. Men with power. Women with power. Some of you tonight, you shall begin to have strange, divine encounters. Where divine beings will appear in your room. Ah. Some of you, by the Spirit of God, you begin to talk to non-living objects in your houses and they shall respond to your word. You shall talk to your fridge and say, today is your last day being empty. You shall speak to your car and say, from today, you shall never run on reserve. You shall run on reserve by choice, not by default. 
Begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray. In your prayer, I want you to begin to ask God uh, to build yourself up, to improve uh, your spirit and your vocabulary. I want you to begin to pray, uh, saying, I refuse to be ordinary. I refuse to confess anything uh, that is contrary to the word of God. Uh, I refuse to confess anything that is not the word of God. Uh, in my confession, uh, I shall confess the word of God. Uh, I shall speak the word of God. Uh, I shall decree the word of God. Uh, I shall declare the word of God. Uh, I want you to begin to declare and I want you to begin to decree. Uh, begin to declare and decree uh, that in the year 2023, uh, you are going to see manifestation. Uh, you are going to flourish in the name of Jesus. Uh, you are going to experience uh, luxurian growth. Uh, open your mouth right now. Open your mouth right now. Open your mouth and begin to pray. 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 Open your mouth wherever you are. Begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray. Begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray. Begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray. Something is happening, something is happening. Something is happening. Something is happening. Begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray. Begin to pray, begin to pray. In Jesus' name. Lift up your hands. The Bible says, I will give you a new heart. And I see it in the realms of the spirit. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth shall speak. And scripture says, I will give you a new heart. I will take away the heart of the stone and I'll give you a flesh heart. And as you walk, you shall hear a voice saying, Turn ye this way. That is, so. that is a new spirit in you. That is so. God is calling you back to the altar. That is so. God is calling you back to his house. That is so. Where your prayer life shall be more than what it used to be. Where your love and your burning heart for Jesus will so. go up high. That is so. Lift up your hands. A new spirit in you. That is so. A new spirit in you. That is so. An unction in you. That is so. A holy hunger for the word of God. That is so. For the supernatural. That is so. Let there be a special relationship between you and the Holy Ghost. That is so. May your eyes be open. That is so. May your ears be awakened. That is so. Wherever you left Jesus, I pray for you right now that is coming into your heart. That is so. You will put him first before anything. That is so. You will say, you Jesus first and me last. That is so. As I disappear, Jesus, may you appear. That is so. As I decrease, may you increase. That is so. In my speech, may they hear you, Jesus. That is so. At my workplace, they shall look at me and they shall see Jesus. That is so. I don't have to open my mouth and say I'm born again. They shall see results will follow me. That is so. 